New at 10, some of the most vulnerable children in North Alabama are victims of the very same agency they're supposed to protect them. The I-Team started digging into this couple's history after Florence police arrested them in March. Daniel and Janice Spurgeon face nearly 700 counts of child abuse, sex abuse, rape, sodomy, sexual torture, and human trafficking. It's a story that has had the Tennessee Valley talking ever since. And the Department of Human Resources kept giving the Spurgeons foster children despite complaints about them. We 31's Brecken Terry questioned DHR about its policies and what mistakes, if any, agents made in this I-Team big story. I can't speak directly to that. Barry Spear deflected almost every question I asked about the Spurgeon case. The public information officer for Alabama's Department of Human Resources cited the lack of information he provided on confidentiality laws. It's not our interest to protect the parents, but we're protecting the children, and you can't, you can't get into the information about the parents without exposing the children. But we never asked a specific question about any child. The I-Team wanted to know one thing. How many times anyone affiliated with DHR went to the Spurgeon home while they lived in Florence for eight years? No, I can't. In that time, they racked up almost 700 criminal charges for abusing children. Through the open records law, we requested information about any complaints filed by foster children against the Spurgeons. I also asked how many times DHR officers visited the home. The law requires monthly visits. But DHR denied every request. But I found a loophole. Police in Florida arrested the Spurgeons on similar abuse charges last year. Florida court documents revealed agents there requested 317 pages of Alabama DHR documents about the Spurgeons. Take a look at what I discovered in just the outline. At least twice, DHR reviewed corporal punishment policies with the Spurgeons. One of those reviews happened in 2009. Corporal punishment is not allowed by foster parents, and, and if, a if a foster parent does use corporal punishment and we're aware of it, then we'll talk with them, reestablish that rule, mm -hmm. and, you know, if they, if they continue to do it and, 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 you know, don't stop or, you know, then we'll pull their certification. Yet they continued to be foster parents. In 2010, one child complained she was only allowed to bathe once. Listen to DHR's response when I asked them about the complaint. I've seen this before, and uh, that was a mistake in Florida, that that was ever allowed to be something that was publicly available, so I can't comment on it. So I asked John James. He's the Family Services Director at DHR. I just thought it was one of the worst things I've seen in my 25 years, if not the worst. But not bad enough to say how DHR missed the alleged abuse. Investigators in Florence say the Spurgeons beat, raped, tied up, and or abused 11 children. One of the alleged victims told Florence police Daniel Spurgeon started beating her when she was just 12. Quote, he poured candle wax. I have scars across my chest. I have a scar on my toe where he dug a drill into it and a burn mark on my leg. Again, I asked Spear how agents miss signs of abuse or if any agents even inspected the home. I think the answer to that question would be how, do, how does any child abuse go on in a home without people knowing about it? It happens all the time. It's happening right now. DHR told Way 31 there's an electronic log that catalogs every time a social worker visits a foster home or checks on a child. It includes the dates and times of the visit. DHR said there is a log for the Spurgeons, but they wouldn't tell us the number of visits or the frequency. So what about the agents who made an undisclosed number of visits? Remember, some of those visits involved corporal punishment policies. When something like this comes out, is the social worker ever held responsible or maybe goes through more training, or is that just something you all get to? to oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, we're getting a little too close into the, to the actual case. DHR's own documents show more than 1,700 foster children across North Alabama in the past year. So I asked James if caseworkers are spread too thin. He said most agents handle about 18 cases at a time, but a 30% turnover rate among social workers causes a few problems. When we have turnover and workers leave, it does require other workers to cover their caseloads until new workers can be hired and trained. And so that does present a problem um, in, in some counties when they do lose staff. 
James admitted there are problems at DHR, but wouldn't give specifics when I pressed him for what, if any, changes you can expect to see. Certainly as a result of this case and the investigation and the review that we're doing to see what we could have done better or if we could have done anything better. Better for the 11 children the Spurgeons are accused of abusing while DHR put dozens of children in their care. And better for the thousands of some of the most vulnerable children across Alabama. In Florence, Breck and Terry, Way 31, Hometown News. And that review is expected to take at least a month. Janice Spurgeon is being held on a $2 million bond in the Lauderdale County Detention Center. And Daniel Spurgeon is still in Florida on abuse charges there.